it'll be fun. All right, you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, Danny Jones, Singing News Magazine. Welcome to the Fourth Page Podcast. My guest today, Roland Kesterson of The Inspirations. We're glad you're here today. Glad to be here, Danny. All right, here is a group that is just literally the buzz of Southern gospel music today. (laughs) It's not a new group singing new songs. It's not a new group singing uh, old uh, songs with a new arrangement. This is a group that is well-rooted in history, has a truckload of great songs, and you guys are just walking out on stage and delivering that. We're just doing what we love, Danny. That's exactly right, and it shows. The inspirations of today have a very remarkable resemblance to the inspirations of the early 70s, and I'm not necessarily physically, but in terms of sound and songs and it's not really anything that you guys set out to do, is it? No, no. We we, we didn't anticipate this happening. Back in uh, March when the pandemic took place, we needed to fill some of the dates, and um, we put this group together. Of course, I'd been with the group for six years. Luke Vaught had been with the group for 12 years. Wyatt Austin, who was playing the bass guitar at the time, uh, he stepped up to the bass singer's role, and uh, we hired a young man out of Adairsville, Georgia, Isaac Moore, to sing tenor. We, and at first we thought that Archie and Eddie and Marlon were, were just going to stay off the road for the time being until a vaccine was available. Mm-hmm. But as we began to sing and as things started happening, Archie started seeing God move. And he said, you know what, boys, I've, I've kind of been looking for a chance to slow down. I've been looking for an opportunity to kind of back off a little bit. And I see God doing this right in front of my eyes. I'm going to roll with it. So... The decision was made. Archie said, I'm, I'm not going to come back on the road full time. I'll just come and join you and say four or five times a year. You boys are the inspirations. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. Got a brand new live album mm-hmm. that was recorded at the National Quartet Convention last year. And, of course, you've got a, a regular album that's in the works. Did you ever dream when you first jumped on the bus of the inspirations that one day that when – everybody gathered together on a Wednesday night to leave out for the weekend that you would be in charge. <laughs> no. And let me say this, I never wanted that. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and I'm still not in charge. You know, Archie, Archie's, he, he's our, he's our boss and he's our manager. Mm-hmm. As far as taking care of things on the road, I help him out with that. But, um, I never wanted that position, but it was kind of thrown in my lap and in being the I'm the oldest guy of the group, and the guys kind of look to me um, as a father figure and as a big brother figure. All right, I have to ask, how old are you? I'm 36. 36, and you're the oldest guy (laughs) in the group. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Well, the Inspirations, of course, uh, got their start back in 1964. And uh, along the way, they have been tied to some of the biggest songs that this industry has ever known when i Mm -hmm. wake up to sleep no more jesus is coming sing touring that city jesus is mine and all the way up through the 70s 80s 90s and into the 2000s so when it comes time for you to put together a set list you don't have to look very far to find good songs do you (laughs) well we don't we first of all we don't do a set list Mm -hmm. most of the time uh Back when I first joined the Inspirations, Martin Cook was the piano player. And all we ever knew was Martin would come out, sit down at the piano, and whatever he played is what we sung. Mm-hmm. That was part of the magic of the Inspirations. I, and it's somebody said, well, it's unorganized. Yeah, but it keeps everybody fresh and excited because you never know what you're going to hear when you come see the Inspirations. Right. So when we started this, I looked at Luke and said, Luke, how about we do this? Whatever you play, we'll sing just like it was when Martin was here. And Luke said, I like that idea. Let's do that. So we that's what we do. Of course, Luke, who is an encyclopedia of the Inspirations history and discography, he knows every song that the Inspirations have ever recorded, every key that it was wrote in, every key that it was recorded in. Right. Uh, so he just starts playing and we sing. And when you say every, that's not a generalization. No. That is no. 100% accurate. Yes. Luke knows 
every song. He can tell you what number song it was on the album. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is he's absolute brilliant <laughs> when it comes to Inspirations history. Does that ever make you nervous, though, knowing that he knows all the songs and there might be one little song that kind of got lost in history that he might pull out one night? No, because I have a real, real great talent of making up the words to songs and making them fit. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> hey, so. hey, if you've got it covered, you've got it covered. A lot, of t- and a lot of times Luke will pull out a song and we don't know it, and the boys will just look at me and I'll just make up words and we'll keep plowing through it. <laughs> and nobody knows. Well, except for those diehard inspiration well, fans. Well, that's who, right. There's I, that's not can. the way they recorded that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I've heard that a time oh. or two. So with Archie uh, staying at home a lot uh, in the mountains of North Carolina, uh, do you ever feel any pressure? And maybe pressure is not the right word, but do you ever feel like there's a little extra burden on your shoulders knowing the rich legacy of the group? and you don't want to do anything to ever tarnish that, do you ever feel like you've, you've been handed something that, okay, I've really got to take extra special care of? Absolutely. I mean, I, that's the responsibility that rests on not just mine, but these boys' shoulders is, is, is amazing. Um, we've been handed the mantle, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's ours to do what we need to do with it. Uh, the, the future of the inspirations is in our hands. And that being said, every day that I live, whether I'm at home or whether I'm on the bus or whether I'm on the stage, I always try to keep in my mind the reason that I'm here is because of what they did. Somebody will come after me, Mm -hmm. and I want to give them as much as what they left me. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to look at it. You know, there's another side uh, to the inspiration's history that some people know about and it's it's playing out in reverse now Uh and this is what happened in the late 1970s the inspirations took another group under their wing the primitive quartet literally carried that quartet across the country introducing them to church pastors and promoters and uh, really helped the primitive quartet get established now in the in the 2000s and 20s (laughs) the primitive quartet in a way is returning the favor. Mm, uh, they they have they have taken this version of the inspirations under their wing, and of course you're still under the wing of the the previous inspirations. Mm-hmm. But the primitive, they're helping introduce the inspirations of today to to new audiences. Right, absolutely, and 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 that's how we do things. I mm-hmm. mean, that's just the Christian way. But the inspirations and the primitives have always had a great relationship. Of course, back in the '70s, as you said, the primitives got their start by riding on the inspirations bus. Uh, now the primitives are helping us. One time we went to Lebanon, Missouri, which was a that was a game changer for us. That concert was, but the primitives let us ride on their bus out there because we didn't have anything. At, you know, at the time um, we were riding around a pickup truck, mm-hmm. <laughs> pulling a trailer, so we all rode out there. But now I've got this I've got this story to tell that just happened this past weekend. Uh, since you brought this up, we were singing at the Fontana Village a great event that's going to happen again next year. The Walking by Faith is a group out of Robbinsville, North Carolina. They had their homecoming singing at Fontana Village, and we were on the program with the Primitives. During our set, Luke's been playing the piano that Martin played, and it's pretty old. And I've talked to Luke. I said, you know, we need to we need to think about getting a new piano. And he didn't want to because that piano was the piano that Martin played, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of memories tied to it. Well, it's got to a point where the piano's been cutting out on us. We were in the middle of our set, and the piano just quit in the middle of wake up to sleep no more. We had to stop singing. Luke had to turn it back on. We went again. After our set was over with, we gave an invitation, and Mike Riddle come up, and he went over to the piano and put his hand on it, got my microphone, looked at the crowd, and said, you know, this piano's been around a long time. He said, and it's got a lot of memories tied to it. He said, but they can't have a piano that won't work for them. And he looked back through the crowd and said, I want my wife to stand up and I want her to write a $500 check and I want to take up an offering to buy them a new piano tonight. Wow. And they did. That's just the kind of guys they are. They're just, they're some of the most loving people. Oh, yes. 
that you'll ever meet. Let's talk about the history of Roland himself here. Now, this will be short. <laughs> well, you're only 36. <laughs> I mean, really, bragger. Uh, let's, you know, the Inspirations is not your first go round no. in gospel music. Uh, you were, some people remember you from your days with a group called Set Apart. Mm-hmm. I started singing when I was 17 years old with a bluegrass group out of Sparta, Tennessee, named Set Apart. Uh, and I sang with Set Apart for seven years. Of course, you know, that's when I first got to know the Primitive Quartet and the Inspirations. I'd always looked up to them and listened to them, but didn't know them personally. But during those years is when I got to know uh, the Primitives and the Inspirations and the McCamies and different people. You, mm-hmm. got to meet you, Danny. And um, that that's where I got my start. And then during that time, I made friends with Martin Cook. Um, of course, Martin used to bear hunt, and, and, and I hunt with dogs as well. And we did a little dog trading at one time, and we remained friends throughout the years. Of course, the time come in 2015 when he needed a baritone singer, and he called, and I was ready. And now you, you're, you're there for the duration for a while, it looks like. I'm here till the Lord comes back. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I was born to be where I am now, mm-hmm. and um, I have no intentions to do anything else. Well, when you were growing up, who was, did you listen to the music of the Inspirations? Uh, was that your favorite group, or, or how did you get involved to start with in gospel music? Going, Going to church um, with mom and dad. Of course, mom and dad sang in a they you know mom. This is kind of a long story. I'll just try to shorten it as best I can. When mom and dad were first married, dad wasn't saved. And long story short, dad got dad got saved and they went to a a concert in Knoxville to hear the inspirations and my dad when he seen Mike Holcomb come across the stage with his shoes shining so bright that they'd knock your eyes out (laughs) and heard him singing bass like he sung and seen Archie singing tenor like he sung and Troy and Eddie daddy fell in love Mm -hmm. with gospel music and him and mom of course mom had already been singing uh, all her life. My grandpa was a pastor for 56 years, so grandpa would go hold revivals and pastor churches, and mom would sing and play the piano. Mom and dad and Aunt May and Uncle David, mama's sister and her husband, they got burdened to really sing gospel music, so they started. And my childhood years were spent traveling around, you know, our area, Tennessee, listening to mom and dad and Aunt May and Uncle David sing on Saturday and Sunday and Sunday night and at homecomings and different things. That's really where I fell in love with gospel music. And of course, going to the dates, we would always listen to the cathedrals and the inspirations and the McCamies, Palmetto State Quartet, and they introduced me to the Statesman Quartet. And, and that's where my love for gospel music began. You know, uh, skipping forward to today, one thing that a lot of people have talked about, and it's really simple, mm-hmm. but it has uh, it has come up in many conversations about today's versions of the inspiration, is the sheer number of songs <laughs> that are being uh, performed during your time. Um, perfect example of the Memphis Quartet show. Uh, you thirty minutes set. Song after song after song after song. One break mm-hmm. to introduce the guys, and that was it. But those those kind of things are happening every weekend. Uh, again, very similar to what the Inspirations used to do uh, down through the years. And it's important and has been important to the group to sing. Mm-hmm. To sing the songs. That's what people are wanting to hear. They're wanting to hear the, the, the songs. And you've, you've taken that on very seriously as a personal task to make sure you can pack in as many songs as you reasonably can and, and still get the message across. What, yeah. what, what was your driving factor behind a lot of that? A lot of folks may not remember this. Well, they, they, unless they were there, they can't remember it. But back when the inspiration started, and the way we know this is we've been privileged to have access to old recordings, mm-hmm. uh, homemade recordings from the crowd from the 60s and from the 70s when the Inspirations first got started. Uh, Luke has 
found a lot of those recordings. Archie had a lot of them. Ronnie Hutchins had a lot. Of them. We, we've, we've, we've gained access to a lot of these old recordings. So we can sit and listen to how they used to do things. Now, in later years, they kind of got, Martin kind of got away from that. But back in the day when they first got started, they would take a stage and they would do just exactly what we do now. Mm-hmm. They would sing and wouldn't stop until Martin quit. It wouldn't, you know, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, nonstop. And then Martin would get up, say a few words, and they'd go right back in singing. And it puts the focus on the song mm-hmm. more than the singers. It also makes it a little tough on the singers well, sometimes, it too. Does, <laughs> it does, but, you know. That's just how we do it. (laughs) Well, hey, if it works, it works. Hey, we're going to come back with more with Roland Kesterson of the Inspirations in just a few moments. Stay tuned to the Fourth Page Podcast. Welcome back to the Fourth Page Podcast. I'm Danny Jones of Singing News Magazine. Roland Kesterson of the Inspirations is with us today. Now, Roland, for those people who may be tuning in today and really don't understand the inner workings of a quartet, it's not just you calling all the shots. It's no. it's a team effort. So how do the Inspirations of today divvy up all the things that are necessary for a full-time group? <laughs> well, of course, you know, Archie, is he's the boss and he's the manager. He's the owner of the group, so ultimately we're all accountable to him. But on the road, I take care of the scheduling. I do all the booking um, as well as, uh, you know, any any business work that needs to be done. I, tra- I take care of that. Isaac, our tenor singer, he takes care of the product. If our product, you know, gets low and we need to order product, he'll place a call and and get product ordered, as well as taking care of the business of the table. Okay. Uh, Luke and Luke and Wyatt take care of our sound equipment, setting the sound up, and um, and mixing everything, getting it ready for for the um, for the singing for the concert. And what I do <laughs> is I just help them in whatever whatever needs to be done. If Isaac needs help at the table, I help him with the table. If the boys need help with the sound system, I help them with the sound system. I take care of the bus, keep it clean, and keep it serviced, and take care of what needs to be done with it. As far as promotion and uh, anything that has to do with that, we we split that up. You know, if 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 White needs to do something, I'll say you know take care of this, and he does it. Mm-hmm. White also takes care of all of our social media, uh, the Facebook page, any type of of social media that we have he's he's over that so it's truly a team effort oh it's definitely a team effort. and um, uh, for the techies out there mm-hmm. what's your favorite microphone my favorite microphone uh-huh. a newman okay all right so just yeah. wanted to throw that in there because somebody <laughs> will ask somebody yeah. will have. i'd yeah. love to have the we're we're, tr- we're going to try to get some soon but but uh a newman's probably my favorite okay earlier you alluded to being um the oldest guy on the bus now mm-hmm. You're 36. Wow, bragger. Uh, now, I have been watching the social media posts of the inspirations off and on over the last several months, and yeah. and I do see where you are having to be the father figure, the, <laughs> the big brother, all of those things that you mentioned. In yeah. fact, uh, why don't you share some of those, uh, well, I'm the oldest guy stories for us. <laughs> well, uh, just this past weekend, uh, we needed to service the bus, and um, we needed to change the oil. Well, Wyatt and Isaac, neither one knew how to. Uh, Isaac's 20 years old, Wyatt's 22. So I said, boys, just meet me at the house a little early, and, and I'll show you how to change oil. You can help me. And, you know, that I feel like when you do that, not only are you helping somebody, but you're investing in their future. Right. Uh, I wouldn't know if somebody hadn't showed me. Mm-hmm. So we all got together and <laughs> and we changed the oil on the bus together. And, you know, that's... It, it doesn't sound like much, but at the same time, it's like, okay, if something happens to me, somebody's got to do absolutely. this. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, there is going to come a time you being the oldest guy on the bus, and yeah. I'm not really going to want to crawl under there. <laughs> we'll let somebody else do that. So now being on the road just naturally sets anybody up for 
funny happenings, you know, road stories, the things that you have to be there to see, to believe. Mm-hmm. And you've traveled with the inspirations long enough to know that if it's going to happen, it will happen to a gospel group. Oh, yes. Any particular oh, yes. road story that just really stands out in your mind? Yeah, I've got something on my mind right now. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were down in Alabama, and we were singing uh, at a church there. And after the church, the uh, promoter had to stay at his house, spend the night there. Well, it come time to go to bed, and he told us, he said, Now, I'm setting the alarm. If you have to go out, here's the code. Here's the code. Well, okay. Everybody went to bed. About 30 minutes went by, and Wyatt walks in carrying a little insect trap. A glue trap that you know that catches insects had a few spiders on it well Isaac is deathly afraid of spiders mm. so White comes in and says what can you do with this <laughs> I got a hold of it <laughs> and run into their room Isaac and White were staying in one room Luke and I was staying in another I run into the room where Isaac was and Isaac was standing on top of the bed shaking because he was afraid of what I had in mind because of those spiders. Of course, I just start gouging him. Yeah. And, egging it on. And egging it on, seeing what he'll do. Well, he run all the way around the room and down to the stair case. Well, here I come, carrying a spider, singing, the itsy bitsy spider. Wow. <laughs> you are cruel. Isaac gets to the top of the staircase, and then... As I get closer, he starts running down the staircase, stops halfway down the staircase, and I start down the stairs and sing, climb down the water spout. <laughs> As I get close, Isaac, oblivious to what is going on with you know the house and what uh-huh. the homeowner had said, he runs out the door, and as soon as he opens the door, the alarm I'm starts sure. going off. And, and, oh, it would just... Of course, me and Wyatt and Luke, we run back into the room and hid, and Isaac had to come back out and meet the man that owned the house. <laughs> wow, what a friend. Oh, yes, we watch well, out for each other. Yeah, well, that, that, keep, that, keep, that does keep things lively on the road, no <laughs> doubt. I, I, do have, I, I do recall, though, uh, not too long ago, I believe you guys uh, got locked inside an auditorium and couldn't get oh out. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> uh, which that, now that I have to admit, that usually doesn't happen too much. But now, uh, and this was in Memphis, I uh-huh. believe, at the Memphis Quartet yeah. Show. And that's a, a big civic center complex that um, has underground parking for a lot of the buses. Mm-hmm. And that's where you made your mistake. Yeah, that's where we made our mistake. Yeah, they, uh, now, if I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong, you pulled in there after the concert was over, everything was loaded up. But you decided just to walk a couple blocks down to get something to eat yeah. and come back and would leave. Well, in that walk during that time and while you were eating, they locked up the building, including your bus. And how many hours did it take before somebody finally got you out of there? Well, I called my good friend Danny Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't answer the phone. <laughs> Who didn't answer the phone. No, you did answer. But but uh, what happened, we, uh, we were locked in. And, of course, Josh Franks was there. He stayed with us the whole time. We walked over to the hotel and asked the receptionist, you know, look, is there anybody can come open this door for us? And she told us to go over to the security <laughs> security department. We made a few phone calls because the door was locked, finally got a hold of somebody, and they met us over there and unlocked the door. It took us about probably two hours yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, let this be a lesson to all gospel groups when you pack up and ready to leave at least make sure you're outside the building uh, especially in memphis and especially in memphis <laughs> well what lies ahead for the inspirations we we mentioned earlier that there's a live album that you guys have had out for a while tell and them about the title of that you, it, you had a hand in that it's called what a happy time what a wonderful time. what a wonderful time like i said uh what a wonderful time live and for those Inspirations fans who have been with the group for all these years, they know this is the second time that title has been used. Mm-hmm. It didn't have the word live on it. Mm-hmm. But What a Wonderful Time was which album? That Was was that the first album or no, the, it was the second, second or second, third? Second or second third. Or third. Yeah. I can't, Luke would know, but I can't remember. It's right. second or third. Uh, Luke would also tell us all the songs were oh, on yes. there and what yes. key they were in. Yes. I know one song was on there. 
Which one? What a wonderful, wonderful time. time. Okay, I walked right into that. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, that album, uh, which, uh, as we mentioned, was recorded live in Pigeon Forge during the uh, NQC's uh, Fall Festival event, mm-hmm. featured a lot of the songs that brought the inspirations to the, the status that they are and mm-hmm. have been for all these years. And it only made sense to pay tribute to the legacy of the inspirations by by somehow incorporating that into the launch, if you mm-hmm. will, of the new group. And the original title for the album, I'm not sure what it was going to be, but you called me and, and we, you and I talked and, and three or four other people talked. It's like, okay, that's not a bad title, but it's just, it just needs something. Mm-hmm. And we talked about it for a while. We went back and picked up that title and tagged the word live, and it just it fit. Mm-hmm. Now, what makes it fit is this. On that recording, the inspirations and the fans – they are absolutely, everyone's just having the time of their life. It yeah. is truly a wonderful time. It's one of the best live recordings out there today. Mm-hmm. and uh, It's done really well for you guys, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, it has. There's another part of that, too. At the time, we didn't know we were going to, you know, we weren't trying to record a live album. That the record company just decided to do that. But at the time that it was recorded and produced, we still didn't know for sure that we were going to continue on as the inspirations. Mm -hmm. We thought that this could possibly just be for a season, just for a time. So the title also played into that as well. This has been a wonderful time. Right. However, none of us had any idea of what was going to happen. Now it's, as you say, the rest is history. Now this is the inspirations. And it truly is a wonderful time. Yes. And uh, it's, it's thrilling to a lot of us who have been in gospel music for a long time to know that what started in 1964 has the the right personnel, the right the right ingredients mm-hmm. to carry on for generations to come. And uh, I know a lot of people are so proud of what you and the guys are doing. And I know Archie is definitely proud. Archie's ecstatic. Yeah, he, he's he's. I know he's our boss and he's our manager, but Archie is our biggest fan. He is. He <laughs> really is. I've talked to him several times, and he said, let me tell you what my boys are doing. Yeah, so yeah, he, he's yeah. enjoying it. Roland Kesterson has been our guest today on the 4th Page Podcast. Keep up with him and all the inspirations on social media. Great stuff there. Look for it. And in the meantime, make sure you make time on your calendar for the next episode of the 4th Page Podcast. We'll see you right here.